G'day guys, if you're thinking about going off-grid camping, there's three real things that you've got to think about. First of all, food, which is pretty easy. If you've got a, a fridge and so, you, know, you can buy tin food and baked beans and stuff, you can survive three, four, five days out there, no worries at all. The next thing you've got to worry about is power. And nowadays with the solar panels and lithium batteries and stuff like that, it's pretty much sorted, especially if you're driving for a little bit or you can you know, charge it. You've got generators and also you can charge off your car as well sort of thing, which is great. But the last thing is water, okay? So to conserve water sooner or later, you've got to have a conversation about shower time. Oh, Dad, not a spray bottle shower. I know, we've got to conserve water some way. Well, why can't you just get this water, heat it up, and put it in the shower? Yeah, well, there's cross-contamination issues and, you know, it's kind of complicated. Dad, what's your job? Love you, kids, and kiss your mum on the lips. You're a plumber. That's what plumbers do. They take water, heat it up, and put it out the shower. All right, here, shower time. Or maybe you're just pretending to be a plumber. Hey! G'day guys. So if you've already got a hot water unit on your van, like a, like a storage like this van does, a little 14 litre Truma, why would you put an extra hot water system in? And the reason is, wouldn't it be great to, when you do have to conserve water, you can say to your wife and your kids, yeah, you can have a 20 litre shower and it's not gonna cost you, you know, that precious drinking water. So there is a way to do it, to do it safely, so there's no cross contamination. And this is what I did in my van. Now, on these ones, the Force 15 Plus, you can get access to the sh um, shower pipes behind. That's what you need to get, at, get access to. So I've put a couple of check valves in there so the water can't cross-contaminate. Because if you've got a mixer, especially, the hot water or the non-portable water can go into the cold main. That's what you don't want to happen, okay? Especially if you're out, you know, miles from anywhere and you get some sort of bug in the water or something like that. So it's very important that, you, yeah, that's all sorted out. If you're not sure, what you have to do or whatever, yeah, just, just call your local plumber. He should be able to, you know, explain it to you and sort it out. Okay, so um, I've got dual cot water systems. They do do a new bracket like this because you're not allowed to permanently mount them to your caravan or stuff like that because they're meant to be a portable thing. So I've put one of these on the side. So I'll show you how, how easy it is to sort of hook it up to the van. So you just grab your dual cut or whatever you got. You can hang it on the side, right? And you just got to put that in like this, push it up and pop it like that, okay? So that's hooked, hooked on now. Um, then I've got a like a 1.2 gas hose, a bayonet on the hand, on over here, so you just gotta take the gas, the gas bayonet out, okay? Pop that in like this, okay? Nice and straight. And that'll just clip onto the bottom of the hot water unit. All right, so now, you got your pump, okay? And so, always, always check which way the arrow's going, so it's, it's going that way. That plugs onto the cold, okay? And now the other side of the pump, see what you can do then is you can grab one of these, you know, containers or something. This is a, I don't know, 25 litre, 40 litre or something like that, 25. And all I've made up is a, a little pipe like this, okay, which takes onto a, you know, like a normal hose, hose, hose fitting. And then what I do is I fill it up down at, the, down at the creek, drag it up back to the van, take the cap off, and that just slides in like that all, all the way down. And then you can have that like that, and then the other side, you just get the other side of the of your hose here to um, plug onto the plug onto the pump. Clip that on there. That goes into this hose fitting like that. Okay. And so now, once I turn the power on, um, you know it'll start sucking water from here and into the hot water unit. Now I do have a over here. If you can see, I've got a um, like an Anderson plug that I just plug one of these you know cigarette lighters on there for for your lighter there that just that just slides into the side that's all plumbed in by the oil electrician so now the pumps all connected the only thing I need to do now is grab the this is the hotline okay so the hotline goes onto the hot water system clips in the middle and then just under here you can see I've got a one of those quick release fittings that just slides in like that clip and now that hot water this hot water when the shower's turned on, I've got to go inside, turn a valve off, make sure it goes through the correct check valve and everything. 
and then when I turn the shower on inside, it'll be just hot water coming through, okay? So you can still adjust it if you want, but it's check valves to check it. But the good thing about that is with the jewel, because you can adjust the temperature, say, you can have it at 40 degrees, and it'll suck it out, heat it at 40 degrees. So for the kids and that, it's very safe. It just pours out, you know, on a, you know, pours out on a really nice temperature, and it just sucks through. So that means your wife and kids and stuff can blow 20 litres of water when you're out there, where there's, you know, non-potable water available at creeks and dams and stuff like that but you know you can run it through this thing so if this packs up you know you, you can you can chuck it out after a couple of years but what you don't want is to put nice water or you know it's like non-potable water that might have a lot of calcium in it or salt into your Truma hot water system in your van that's going to cause you issues later on down the track okay so this is a good sort of simple way of doing that where you can go for an extended period of time because you're not so concerned about the water if you can get to a dam or something like that so if you like the setup here just call your local plumber, they should be able to sort it out for you. But if you live in Perth, then give us a call, come over and see us and uh, drop the van off and we'll sort it out for you. Okay guys, thanks for watching, catch you later.